This is a Tamagotchi. If you were a kid in the late 90s and mid 2000s, then it really needs no introduction. Anyone who was anyone had one of these on the playground. The idea behind them is simple. You're responsible for taking care of a small creature. You have to feed it, bathe it, play with it, etc. If you do well, then your creature will grow, evolve, be happy. And if you don't, it just dies. While teaching kids how to take care of a pet and instilling the existential dread of being responsible were lots of fun, I think we can do better. In my next few videos, I'm going to be putting together what I call and bring the Tamagotchi experience to the next level. Throughout these videos, I'm going to show you the design, coding, and construction of the And if you want to learn how to make one yourself, hit subscribe and stick around. The first thing we can work on upgrading is the display. The nostalgia of the small, single color LCD is great. It reminds me of being on a family road trip, trying to turn on the light, and being convinced by my parents' reaction that I had just committed a war crime. However, time has continued to move forward, and kids today with their iPads and TikTok dances need more. With that being said, let me introduce to you the ILI 9488TFT LCD. This beast is 3.5 inches of full color backlit power. It communicates through something called SPI, or the Serial Peripheral Interface, and with the right code we can show anything we want on it. It can show text, images, even GIFs, and thanks to the fully adjustable backlight, we can use it anywhere without having to worry about a trial in Geneva. This particular model also has an integrated touch controller, which I don't have plans for right now, but could be used in the future to add touchscreen controls. Because of this, it also came with a DS stylus, which is handy since I lost mine somewhere in 2006. Now I know what you're thinking, thanks to a curse from an evil wizard, and yes, this does sound like it would be way too expensive, but luckily, the slow march of time has brought with it at least a couple of benefits, one of which is smaller, better, and cheaper electronics. This whole screen only costs $17 which might sound like quite a bit, but it's not too bad when you consider that it's half the price of the original Tamagotchi when you adjust for inflation. Links to it and everything else I'm gonna be talking about are gonna be available in the description down below. Now that we're looking good, we need to sound good as well. There's a lot of ways that you can add sound to a project, but I chose to go with the simplest one. This is called a piezo buzzer, and it is capable of producing one note at a time. That might not sound like much, but it does let us do things like a Mario fireball sound, and also play some simple music. With our display and sound figured out, now we need to move on to what's gonna be running this whole show. I'm gonna be using something called a microcontroller, which is basically just a tiny computer that can read inputs and control outputs. I've used a lot of different microcontrollers in my projects, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. The Arduino Pro Mini, for example, uses almost no power in its sleep state, which makes it perfect for battery powered operations like my universal remote and the ESP8266 can connect to Wi-Fi, which made it perfect for controlling Spotify. For this project though, we needed something a little bit more powerful, and with a good amount of inputs and outputs in order to control the screen. After looking around online a little bit, I set it on the ESP8266's big brother, the ESP32. It runs at a staggering 240 megahertz, which in layman's terms, means it's super duper fast. It also has 27 I.O. pins, which means we can put whatever inputs and outputs we want on it, no problem. The ESP works like a lot of other microcontrollers, and can be programmed using the Arduino IDE. There is some setup involved, but I'll dive more into that when I go deeper into the code in my next video. One other feature of the ESP32 that I don't really have plans for at the moment, but could be used in the future, is the ability to connect to Wi-Fi, just like its little brother. I'm thinking there could be some kind of online backup or high score leaderboard system. If you have any ideas for how it could be used, leave them in the comments below. The last thing I'm going to be talking about in this video are buttons. The original Tamagotchi is iconic for its simple three button design. I'm going to be doing the same thing, but that doesn't mean there's not room for improvement. The original buttons were small, squishy, and seem to be designed for child's hands for some reason. I'm going to be replacing those with these bigger arcade style buttons that have a nice satisfying click. Eventually, I plan to create a sleek 3D printable case to hold everything together. For now, everything's laid out on a breadboard and I'm using this cardboard to keep it all in place. Things will definitely be changing, but if you want to follow along right now, I'll leave links in the description to the code and the wiring diagram. With the screen and buttons all connected, I wrote just a little bit of code to make sure everything's working. Right now all it basically does is draw this cute little character bouncing around the screen. He'll get hungry and tired over time. If he's too tired, he'll go to sleep. And if he's hungry, you can press this button to feed him a taco. I got this cute little guy from a website called Kenny.nl. They have a huge selection of free 2D and 3D assets that you should definitely check out if you're making a game or something. I'll have that linked in the description down below. Speaking of assets, if you or someone you know makes pixel art and would like to help me create art for the Macro Gachi, please leave it in a comment below or send me an email. 
Unfortunately, that's everything I've been able to do so far. I have big plans for the macro gachi. I want to take my time to get it right over multiple videos instead of trying to rush it all out in one. This does have a benefit, however, as I get to take feedback from you, the viewer. Two heads are better than one, and I want to hear your ideas in the comments down below. With that, that pretty much wraps up everything I've got. I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you next time on Make It For Less.